Hi folks, so welcome to the part two of the video tutorials for the uh, browser-based circuit simulator at lushprojects.com. Uh, if you haven't listened to part one yet, then uh, I suggest you go and have a look for that. Um, what we're going to look at in this part is uh, a bit of guidance on how to create your own circuits in the simulator. So the starting URL is lushprojects.com slash circuitjs again. And we're going to go straight into the full window version by clicking on the link at the top here. So as usual, this loads the uh, default circuit, but for this demo, we're going to focus on creating our own. Uh, so to start off with a blank circuit, we go to circuits and choose the blank circuit option, which uh, creates a blank circuit. So now we have some free space to draw our own circuit. And we're going to start by needing some kind of voltage source. So all the um, uh, all the things that you can add to the circuit appear on this draw menu, which, by the way, is also available by right-clicking in empty space uh, in the drawing area. Um, I prefer to use the menu. So there's lots of different categories here, and it's uh, worth spending some time looking through them. Um, but all the voltage sources are on this inputs and sources group. And there's quite a lot of different types, as you can see, but we're going to start by looking at the two terminal voltage source, which is like a battery. So we'll draw a two terminal voltage source. That one's upside down. I'll draw it the right way up like that. So now I seem to have drawn this in slightly the wrong place. Um, so we're going to need to move it. Now, when we selected the add voltage source, you may have noticed the cursor changes to a plus, which means that we're in adding thing. Um, so Anything that we click and drag now is just going to add a new uh, example of the thing that we're adding. So to get back and sort of start deleting these things, we need to go back into the selection mode. And the way we can do that is from the draw menu, we choose this last option, select or drag select, which is uh, also available by pressing space uh, or indeed the escape key. So now I'm going to go back to select mode. I now have the arrow available. Um, and I can click on these things and, well, we'll do it with right click. We can right click and choose delete, or we can click on it, hit the delete key, and away they go. So we can also then drag him back to where he should have been in the first place. Um, we're going to sort of make a very simple LED that lights up here. Um, so the next thing we're going to need is an LED. Um, I happen to know that LEDs are in outputs and labels. So we'll pick an LED um, and uh, join that up. And now we're going to need a resistor. Um, so a lot of these things have shortcut keys. So for the resistor, the shortcut key is R. Um, so rather than choosing it from the menu, I'm just going to press R and you'll see the cursor changes to a plus. And now if I click and drag, uh, I get a resistor appearing. Um, so now we just need to draw a couple of wires to link this circuit up. Um, but before I do that, we notice that I haven't perhaps made this battery quite long enough to make these nice and horizontal. Um, so we can actually resize these components. So to do that, go back into the select mode. And when you hover over the components, you'll see a couple of square handles here and here appear on either side of the components. And if you drag those handles, that will resize the component. Now, in some cases, uh, it may be hard just to grab those handles. So if you've got components very close to each other, for example. Um, so you can force the program to only go into the resizing mode, um, either in the normal select mode, hold down the control key, and then anywhere you click near, vaguely near the end of the uh, component will be treated as a drag on the handle. Um, or there is indeed a special drag mode, which is called drag post, which is just like always having the control key pressed. So now whenever I click on a component, it resizes it rather than moves it. Anyway, let's go back to the, the normal uh, move mode. We can just drag that around. So lastly, lastly we need to add some wires. Um, wires are also on the draw menu. Um, and we just drag a wire from here to here, and uh, from here to here. And I've made that a little bit wonky. Let's uh, just tie that up a bit. 
So again, I'm using the control key here just to make that straight. Um, and we can see that we have a battery, a resistor, LED, and we can see current is flowing, and we can see, in fact, the LED is lit up. Now, we might be interested, well, one thing that's nice here, by the way, is a lot of circuit simulators will complain at this point because they'll say, there's no earth in this circuit. Uh, this one does make intelligent decisions about where to put an earth if, if there isn't one. And in this case, uh, it's put an earth at the negative terminal of the battery. Um, what we might be interested in, of course, is what's the current going through this. So we can do this by sort of hovering over this wire, and we can see in the bottom it's showing 31 milliamps. Um, but if we want to show it permanently, we can actually right-click on this wire and choose Edit, and click the Show Current option, and now we get a permanent display of the current sitting next to that wire. Um, so. Lots, in fact, basically all the components have uh, options contained by the right click and choosing edit. So um, if you want to change things, you can do that. Well, 31 milliamps, for example, is quite a lot for a normal LED. So maybe we need to change the value of this resistor a bit. So I've just right clicked and chosen edit there. And I'll put in 110 ohms. Let's have a look at what that looks like. Um, well, now it's gone down to 28 milliamps, which is still a bit much really for a normal resistor. So I'll show you another way of changing these resistor values. And you can do this for capacitors and inductors as well as resistors. Uh, is If you hover over it and scroll your mouse wheel, you get a pop-up uh, which allows you to select from the sort of uh, E12 standard resistor values just by scrolling through here and clicking on the one you want. So I'm going to well, scroll the one you want to the center. So I'm going to go for uh, 150 ohms, that's 21 milliamps, which looks about right. So now we have uh, our nice LED circuit, um, LEDs lit up, and it's all working very nicely. Um, so let's think about some other things we might want to change here. Um, there are lots of different options for voltage sources. Uh, you can add them all from this inputs and sources menu. Uh, but you can also get to them by right-clicking and choosing Edit on this voltage source. And you'll see currently it's a DC source. Well, I'm just going to click on this pop-up and change it to AC. And we get a load of other options for the AC source. Um, but if we look at that now, we see that with the AC source, of course, the LED only passes current in one direction. So what you effectively get is an LED that flashes at the frequency uh, of the uh, of the voltage source, um, and you might be interested in maybe looking at some of these components in a scope. So to get to that scope view, we can click on the component again, right click, and choose view in scope, and you'll get uh, an oscilloscope view of that component, or uh, if you look at a wire, the uh, voltage and current in that wire. So what we see is pretty much what you'd expect in the negative. Grid is the voltage here. Remember, in the negative voltage half, then uh, the LED blocks blocks the voltage completely, and in the positive direction, it's kind of limited by the forward voltage drop of the LED. So the curve flattens out, and the yellow graph, which is the current, shows obviously the current tracks the uh, positive voltage being applied to the uh, to the LED. So very nice. Uh, that's quite quite straightforward. Um, let's look at some other types of voltage source. So as well as these two terminal voltage sources, you have the option of a single terminal voltage source. Um, so these are kind of like supply rails, which are often drawn on circuits. So I'm going to go for a one terminal voltage source um, and we can drag that. And all you get here is a five volt rail. Now, because this is um, because this is a one terminal voltage source, currently we've got no ground in this circuit, uh, so no uh, no current flows. Um, but if I choose G, which is for ground, I can click on and add a ground in that direction, and now we have a complete circuit with current flowing. So just remember, if you use the one terminal voltage sources, uh, you must add a ground yourself. So to get rid of this scope, I'm just going to click remove, right click on the scope and click remove. That'll get rid of the scope. 
Um, and then it might be interesting, well, I wanted to show you something that kind of indicates the limitations of simulations, which is, well, maybe what happens if we uh, get rid of the current limiting resistor in this circuit. So hit escape to go back to select mode, and we'll add some wires just to uh, uh, short circuit around that uh, resistor, and do that. Well, you see all the uh, current is now flowing uh, past the resistor, um, but you get a very, very large current in this simulation. You get 197183883163.3 gigaramps uh, going through this uh, LED, and it's dissipating uh, 98591941581.4 gigawatts. So that's a pretty bright LED. It's um, something like a million times the total power output of the US generating capacity uh, lighting up that LED at the minute in this circuit. So shows you that you shouldn't believe everything you read, everything you see in circuit simulations, even this one. Anyway, let's get rid of this silliness and uh, make this circuit work properly again. So I'll just delete these wires. So what if we want to add another LED in parallel to that one that we just created? Um, well, we're going to follow some good practice and we'll add its own current limiting resistor um, and then we'll add the, another LED. Let's just, yeah, let's just do that and then I'll talk about what I was going to talk about in a minute. So, uh, outputs and labels, LED. And you see, well, nothing's happening uh, and you wonder why that is. Well, the clue are these little red dots at the top and bottom of the uh, arm that we've just drawn. Um, in this program, when you draw a up to an existing wire, it doesn't make a connection. The wires only connect at their endpoints. So in order to join this in, what you actually have to do is split this wire into two pieces covering each segment separately. Um, and it does give you a bit of a warning. These red dots are a hint that it, the program thinks that you've tried to make a connection uh, which hasn't in fact been made. So we'll just move these wires around. Um, I'll actually just delete them and put new wires in. It's quicker. Uh, so get rid of him. Okay. So add some wires. And now we see uh, the two LEDs uh, lighting up properly. So I think that covers um, most of the kind of key points about how you create a circuit. Obviously, when you're in selection mode, you can uh, you can drag to select things, uh, move the whole thing around, or move individual components around, uh, whatever you want to do. Um, and of course, once you've created your masterpiece circuit, you maybe want to load and save it as well. Now, this program loads and saves into simple text files, but the capacity to do that on the web depends a bit on your browser. If you've got Firefox or Chrome, you're in luck because uh, they support all the features, but the other browsers don't necessarily. But for Firefox and Chrome users to save the file, you can go File and Export as Local File. And what you get here is a link. Um, and you can right click on that link in the case of uh, Firefox here and go Save As. Um, and I'll just save that. Uh, sorry, you can't see this. I'll just move that so you can see it. Um, somewhere on here. Move that onto my desktop. Obviously, give it a new name. So now that's done a save in Firefox, and I can OK that. So if I go to blank circuit, I can now do the reverse process. I can import from local file, um, choose my LEDs, and there's my circuit again. Now, if you don't have either of those options, you can kind of do the kludgy alternative which is to export it as text. So this just gives you all the text that's in one of those files in a window and you can do select all and copy it by doing control C um, and paste it into a text editor of your choice 
um, and then okay go back to a blank circuit to get it back again we can do import from text paste the text that you copied out back into that space and oops I've missed a bit out but uh, that's the danger with this I think is you skip a line at the end and you lose a little bit but we'll add that missing wire back in there we go um, the other thing you can do if you're feeling really brave is export the whole circuit as a link. Now this creates an enormously long link because it has all the text that would be in the text file in the link. Um, it's, it's a capability, I'm not really sure how useful it is, but it was in the original so I kept it. Um, but uh, if you really want a link which is uh, almost a kilobyte long or even longer in some cases, then uh, you could do that as well. Right, I think that is pretty much the highlights that I wanted to show you at this stage. So um, have a play around. Obviously, I've just shown you a really trivial circuit here, um, but you've got all the uh, active components and digital components uh, here as well. Uh, so have a play around and uh, hopefully uh, learn something interesting. All right, thanks very much.